Apoptosis, Wikipedia article audio. Apoptosis is a process of programmed cell death that occurs in multicellular organisms. Biochemical events lead to characteristic cell changes and death. These changes include blebbing, cell shrinkage, nuclear fragmentation, chromatin condensation, chromosomal DNA fragmentation, and global mRNA decay. Between 50 and 70 billion cells die each day due to apoptosis in the average human adult. For an average child between the ages of 8 and 14, approximately 20 to 30 billion cells die a day. In contrast to necrosis, which is a form of traumatic cell death that results from acute cellular injury, apoptosis is a highly regulated and controlled process that confers advantages during an organism's life cycle. For example, the separation of fingers and toes in a developing human embryo occurs because cells between the digits undergo apoptosis. Unlike necrosis, apoptosis produces cell fragments called apoptotic bodies that phagocytic cells are able to engulf and remove before the contents of the cell can spill out onto surrounding cells and cause damage to them. Discovery and Etymology Activation Mechanisms Because apoptosis cannot stop once it has begun, it is a highly regulated process. Apoptosis can be initiated through one of two pathways. In the intrinsic pathway the cell kills itself because it senses cell stress, while in the extrinsic pathway the cell kills itself because of signals from other cells. Both pathways induce cell death by activating caspases, which are proteases, or enzymes that degrade proteins. The two pathways both activate initiator caspases, which then activate executioner caspases, which then kill the cell by degrading proteins indiscriminately. Research on apoptosis has increased substantially since the early 1990s. In addition to its importance as a biological phenomenon, defective apoptotic processes have been implicated in a wide variety of diseases. Excessive apoptosis causes atrophy, whereas an insufficient amount results in uncontrolled cell proliferation, such as cancer. Some factors like FOS receptors and caspases promote apoptosis, while some members of the BCL2 family of proteins inhibit apoptosis. German scientist Karl Vogt was first to describe the principle of apoptosis in 1842. In 1885, Anatomist Walter Fleming delivered a more precise description of the process of programmed cell death. However, it was not until 1965 that the topic was resurrected. While studying tissues using electron microscopy, John Foxton Rosker at University of Queensland was able to distinguish apoptosis from traumatic cell death. Following the publication of a paper describing the phenomenon, Kerr was invited to join Alastair R. Curry, as well as Andrew Wiley, who was Cuddy's graduate student, at University of Aberdeen. In 1972, the trio published a seminal article in the British Journal of Cancer. Kerr had initially used the term programmed cell necrosis, but in the article, the process of natural cell death was called apoptosis. Kerr, Wiley, and Curry credited James Cormack, a professor of Greek language at University of Aberdeen, with suggesting the term apoptosis. Kerr received the Paul Ehrlich and Ludwig Darmstadter Prize on March 14, 2000, for his description of apoptosis. He shared the prize with Boston biologist H. Robert Horvitz. For many years, neither apoptosis nor programmed cell death was a highly cited term. 
two discoveries brought cell death from obscurity to a major field of research, identification of components of the cell death control and effector mechanisms, and linkage of abnormalities in cell death to human disease, in particular cancer. The 2002 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to Sidney Brenner, Horvitz, and John E. Sulston for their work identifying genes that control apoptosis. The genes were identified by studies in the nematode C. elegans and homologs of these genes function in humans to regulate apoptosis. Intrinsic Pathway In Greek, Apoptosis translates to the falling off of leaves from a tree. Cormac, professor of Greek language, reintroduced the term for medical use as it had a medical meaning for the Greeks over 2,000 years before. Hippocrates used the term to mean the falling off of the bones. Galen extended its meaning to the dropping of the scabs. Cormac was no doubt aware of this usage when he suggested the name. Debate continues over the correct pronunciation, with opinion divided between a pronunciation with the second P silent and the second P pronounced, as in the original Greek. In English, the P of the Greek PT consonant cluster is typically silent at the beginning of a word, but articulated when used in combining forms preceded by a vowel as in helicopter or the orders of insects, diptera, lepidoptera, etc. In the original Kerr, Wiley and Curry paper, there is a footnote regarding the pronunciation. Extrinsic Pathway We are most grateful to Professor James Cormack of the Department of Greek, University of Aberdeen, for suggesting this term. The word apoptosis is used in Greek to describe the dropping off or falling off of petals from flowers, or leaves from trees. To show the derivation clearly, we propose that the stress should be on the penultimate syllable, the second half of the word being pronounced like tosis, which comes from the same root to fall, and is already used to describe the drooping of the upper eyelid. The initiation of apoptosis is tightly regulated by activation mechanisms, because once apoptosis has begun, it inevitably leads to the death of the cell. The two best understood activation mechanisms are the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway is activated by intracellular signals generated when cells are stressed and depends on the release of proteins from the intermembrane space of mitochondria. The extrinsic pathway is activated by extracellular ligands binding to cell surface death receptors, which leads to the formation of the death-inducing signaling complex. A cell initiates intracellular apoptotic signaling in response to a stress, which may bring about cell suicide. The binding of nuclear receptors by glucocorticoids, heat, radiation, nutrient deprivation, viral infection, hypoxia, and increased intracellular calcium concentration, for example, by damage to the membrane can all trigger the release of intracellular apoptotic signals by a damaged cell. A number of cellular components, such as poly-ADP ribose polymerase, may also help regulate apoptosis. Apoptosis Model in Amphibians Before the actual process of cell death is precipitated by enzymes, Apoptotic signals must cause regulatory proteins to initiate the apoptosis pathway. This step allows those signals to cause cell death, or the process to be stopped, should the cell no longer need to die. Several proteins are involved, but two main methods of regulation have been identified, the targeting of mitochondria functionality or directly transducing the signal via adapter proteins to the apoptotic mechanisms. An extrinsic pathway for initiation identified in several toxin studies is an increase in calcium concentration within a cell caused by drug activity, 
which also can cause apoptosis via a calcium binding protease calpane. Negative Regulators of Apoptosis The mitochondria are essential to multicellular life. Without them, a cell ceases to respire aerobically and quickly dies. This fact forms the basis for some apoptotic pathways. Apoptotic proteins that target mitochondria affect them in different ways. They may cause mitochondrial swelling through the formation of membrane pores, or they may increase the permeability of the mitochondrial membrane and cause apoptotic effectors to leak out. They are very closely related to intrinsic pathway, and tumors arise more frequently through intrinsic pathway than the extrinsic pathway because of sensitivity. There is also a growing body of evidence indicating that nitric oxide is able to induce apoptosis by helping to dissipate the membrane potential of mitochondria and therefore make it more permeable. Nitric oxide has been implicated in initiating and inhibiting apoptosis through its possible action as a signal molecule of subsequent pathways that activate apoptosis. Proteolytic caspus cascade killing the cell. Mitochondrial proteins known as SMACs are released into the cell's cytosol following the increase in permeability of the mitochondria membranes. SMAC binds to proteins that inhibit apoptosis thereby deactivating them, and preventing the IAPs from arresting the process and therefore allowing apoptosis to proceed. IAP also normally suppresses the activity of a group of cysteine proteases called CASPases, which carry out the degradation of the cell. Therefore, the actual degradation enzymes can be seen to be indirectly regulated by mitochondrial permeability. Cytochrome C is also released from mitochondria due to formation of a channel, the mitochondrial apoptosis induced channel in the outer mitochondrial membrane, and serves a regulatory function as it precedes morphological change associated with apoptosis. Once cytochrome C is released it binds with apoptotic protease activating factor 1 and ADP, which then bind to pro-caspus 9 to create a protein complex known as an apoptism. The apoptism cleaves the pro-caspus to its active form of caspus 9, which in turn activates the effector caspus 3 Apoptotic cell disassembly MAC, also called mitochondrial outer membrane permeabilization pore is regulated by various proteins, such as those encoded by the mammalian BCL2 family of anti-apoptopic genes, the homologs of the SED9 gene found in C. elegans. BCL2 proteins are able to promote or inhibit apoptosis by direct action on MAC-MOMP. BAX and slash or BAC form the pore, while BCL2, BCLXL or MCL1 inhibit its formation. Two theories of the direct initiation of apoptotic mechanisms in mammals have been suggested, the TNF-induced model and the FOS-FOS ligand-mediated model both involving receptors of the TNF receptor family coupled to extrinsic signals. TNF path TNF-alpha is a cytokine produced mainly by activated macrophages, and is the major extrinsic mediator of apoptosis. Most cells in the human body have two receptors for TNF-alpha, TNFR1 and TNFR2. The binding of TNF-alpha to TNFR1 has been shown to initiate the pathway that leads to caspus activation via the intermediate membrane proteins TNF receptor-associated death domain and FOS-associated death domain protein. CIAP1-2 can inhibit TNFA signaling by binding to TRAF2. FLIP inhibits the activation of caspus 8. Binding of this receptor can also indirectly lead to the activation of transcription factors involved in cell survival and inflammatory responses. 
However, signaling through TNFR1 might also induce apoptosis in a caspas independent manner. The link between TNF alpha and apoptosis shows why an abnormal production of TNF alpha plays a fundamental role in several human diseases, especially in autoimmune diseases. FOS path Removal of dead cells The FOS receptor is a transmembrane protein of the TNF family which binds the FOS ligand. The interaction between FOS and FOSL results in the formation of the death-inducing signaling complex, which contains the FADD, Caspas 8 and Caspas 10. In some types of cells, processed Caspas 8 directly activates other members of the Caspas family, and triggers the execution of apoptosis of the cell. In other types of cells, the FOS disk starts a feedback loop that spirals into increasing release of propoptotic factors from mitochondria and the amplified activation of Caspas 8. Pathway Knockouts Common Components Receptor Binding, Activation of Protein Kinase R, Interaction with P53 Expression of viral proteins coupled to MHC proteins on the surface of the infected cell, allowing recognition by cells of the immune system that then induce the infected cell to undergo apoptosis. Following TNFR1 and FOS activation in mammalian cells a balance between propoptotic BID, BOC, or BAD and anti-apoptotic members of the BCL2 family are established. This balance is the proportion of propoptotic homodimers that form in the outer membrane of the mitochondrion. The propoptotic homodimers are required to make the mitochondrial membrane permeable for the release of caspas activators such as cytochrome C and SMAC. Control of propoptotic proteins under normal cell conditions of non-apoptotic cells is incompletely understood, but in general, Bax or Bach are activated by the activation of BH3-only proteins, part of the BCL2 family. CASP as is CASP as is play the central role in the transduction of ER apoptotic signals. CASP as is are proteins that are highly conserved, cysteine-dependent aspartate-specific proteases. There are two types of CASP as is, Initiator CASP as is, Caspas 2,8,9,10,11,12, and effector CASP as is, Caspas 3,6,7. The activation of initiator CASP as is requires binding to specific oligomeric activator protein. Effector CASP as is are then activated by these active initiator CASP as is through proteolytic cleavage. The active effector CASP as is then proteolytically degrade a host of intracellular proteins to carry out the cell death program. Caspas independent apoptotic pathway There also exists a caspas independent apoptotic pathway that is mediated by AFE. Methods for distinguishing apoptotic from necrotic cells Implication in disease Defective pathways Dysregulation of P53 Amphibian frog Xenopus laevis serves as an ideal model system for the study of the mechanisms of apoptosis. In fact, iodine and thyroxine also stimulate the spectacular apoptosis of the cells of the larval gills, tail and fins in amphibians' metamorphosis, and stimulate the evolution of their nervous system transforming the aquatic, vegetarian tadpole into the terrestrial, carnivorous frog. Negative regulation of apoptosis inhibits cell death signaling pathways, helping tumors to evade cell death and developing drug resistance. Many families of proteins act as negative regulators categorized into either anti-apoptotic factors, 
such as IAPS and BCL2 proteins or pro-survival factors like CFLIP, BNIP3, FADD, Anite, and NF, B. Many pathways and signals lead to apoptosis, but these converge on a single mechanism that actually causes the death of the cell. After a cell receives stimulus, it undergoes organized degradation of cellular organelles by activated proteolytic CASPases. In addition to the destruction of cellular organelles, mRNA is rapidly and globally degraded by a mechanism that is not yet fully characterized. mRNA decay is triggered very early in apoptosis. A cell undergoing apoptosis shows a series of characteristic morphological changes. Early alterations include Apoptosis progresses quickly and its products are quickly removed, making it difficult to detect or visualize on classical histology sections. During karyorexis, endonuclease activation leaves short DNA fragments regularly spaced in size. These give a characteristic laddered appearance on agar gel after electrophoresis. Tests for DNA laddering differentiate apoptosis from ischemic or toxic cell death. Before the apoptotic cell is disposed of, there is a process of disassembly. There are three recognized steps in apoptotic cell disassembly. The removal of dead cells by neighboring phagocytic cells has been termed epherocytosis. Dying cells that undergo the final stages of apoptosis display phagocytotic molecules, such as phosphatidylserine, on their cell surface. Phosphatidylserine is normally found on the inner leaflet surface of the plasma membrane but is redistributed during apoptosis to the extracellular surface by a protein known as scramblase. These molecules mark the cell for phagocytosis by cells possessing the appropriate receptors, such as macrophages. The removal of dying cells by phagocytes occurs in an orderly manner without eliciting an inflammatory response. During apoptosis cellular RNA and DNA are separated from each other and sorted to different apoptotic bodies, separation of RNA is initiated as nuclear segregation. Inhibition Many knockouts have been made in the apoptosis pathways to test the function of each of the proteins. Several CASPases, in addition to APAF1 and FADD, have been mutated to determine the new phenotype. In order to create a tumor necrosis factor knockout, an exon containing the nucleotides 37045364 was removed from the gene. This exon encodes a portion of the mature TNF domain, as well as the leader sequence, which is a highly conserved region necessary for proper intracellular processing. TNF slash mice develop normally and have no gross structural or morphological abnormalities. However, upon immunization with SRBC, these mice demonstrated a deficiency in the maturation of an antibody response, they were able to generate normal levels of IgM, but could not develop specific IgG levels. APAF1 is the protein that turns on caspas 9 by cleavage to begin the caspas cascade that leads to apoptosis. Since a slash mutation in the APAF1 gene is embryonic lethal, a gene trap strategy was used in order to generate an APAF1 slash mouse. This assay is used to disrupt gene function by creating an intragenic gene fusion. When an APAF1 gene trap is introduced into cells, many morphological changes occur, such as spina bifida, the persistence of interdigital webs, and open brain. In addition, after embryonic day 12.5, the brain of the embryos showed several structural changes. 
APAF1 cells are protected from apoptosis stimuli such as irradiation. A BAX1 knockout mouse exhibits normal forebrain formation and a decreased programmed cell death in some neuronal populations and in the spinal cord, leading to an increase in motor neurons. The caspus proteins are integral parts of the apoptosis pathway, so it follows that knockouts may have varying damaging results. A caspus 9 knockout leads to a severe brain malformation. A caspus 8 knockout leads to cardiac failure and thus embryonic lethality. However, with the use of CRELOX technology, a caspus 8 knockout has been created that exhibits an increase in peripheral T cells, an impaired T cell response, and a defect in neural tube closure. These mice were found to be resistant to apoptosis mediated by CD95, TNFR, etc. but not resistant to apoptosis caused by UV irradiation, chemotherapeutic drugs, and other stimuli. Finally, a caspus 3 knockout was characterized by ectopic cell masses in the brain and abnormal apoptotic features such as membrane blebbing or nuclear fragmentation. A remarkable feature of these KO mice is that they have a very restricted phenotype, CASP3, 9, APAF1 KO mice have deformations of neural tissue and FADD and CASP8 KO showed defective heart development, however in both types of KO other organs developed normally and some cell types were still sensitive to apoptotic stimuli suggesting that unknown propoptotic pathways exist. In order to perform analysis of apoptotic versus necrotic cells, one can do analysis of morphology by time-lapse microscopy, flow fluorocytometry, and transmission electron microscopy. There are also various biochemical techniques for analysis of cell surface markers, cellular markers such as DNA fragmentation, caspus activation, bid cleavage, and cytochrome C release. It is important to know how primary and secondary necrotic cells can be distinguished by analysis of supernatant for CASP as is, HMGB1, and release of cytokeratin 18. However, no distinct surface or biochemical markers of necrotic cell death have been identified yet, and only negative markers are available. These include absence of apoptotic markers and differential kinetics of cell death markers. A selection of techniques that can be used to distinguish apoptosis from necroptotic cells could be found in these references. HeLa cell Treatments Hyperactive apoptosis the many different types of apoptotic pathways contain a multitude of different biochemical components, many of them not yet understood. As a pathway is more or less sequential in nature, removing or modifying one component leads to an effect in another. In a living organism, this can have disastrous effects, often in the form of disease or disorder. A discussion of every disease caused by modification of the various apoptotic pathways would be impractical, but the concept overlying each one is the same, the normal functioning of the pathway has been disrupted in such a way as to impair the ability of the cell to undergo normal apoptosis. This results in a cell that lives past its use by date and is able to replicate and pass on any faulty machinery to its progeny increasing the likelihood of the cells becoming cancerous or diseased. A recently described example of this concept in action can be seen in the development of a lung cancer called NCIH460. The X-linked inhibitor of apoptosis protein is overexpressed in cells of the H460 cell line. XIAPs bind to the processed form of Caspus 9 and suppress the activity of apoptotic activator cytochrome C, therefore overexpression leads to a decrease in the amount of propoptotic agonists. 
As a consequence, the balance of anti-apoptotic and propoptotic effectors is upset in favor of the former, and the damaged cells continue to replicate despite being directed to die. Defects in regulation of apoptosis in cancer cells occur often at the level of control of transcription factors. As a particular example, defects in molecules that control transcription factor NF, B in cancer change the mode of transcriptional regulation and the response to apoptotic signals, to curtail dependence on the tissue that the cell belongs. This degree of independence from external survival signals, can enable cancer metastasis. The tumor suppressor protein P53 accumulates when DNA is damaged due to a chain of biochemical factors. Part of this pathway includes alpha interferon and beta interferon, which induce transcription of the P53 gene resulting in the increase of P53 protein level and enhancement of cancer cell apoptosis. P53 prevents the cell from replicating by stopping the cell cycle at G1, or interphase, to give the cell time to repair, however it will induce apoptosis if damage is extensive and repair efforts fail. Any disruption to the regulation of the P53 or interferon genes will result in impaired apoptosis and the possible formation of tumors. Inhibition of apoptosis can result in a number of cancers, autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, and viral infections. It was originally believed that the associated accumulation of cells was due to an increase in cellular proliferation but it is now known that it is also due to a decrease in cell death. The most common of these diseases is cancer, the disease of excessive cellular proliferation, which is often characterized by an overexpression of IAP family members. As a result, the malignant cells experience an abnormal response to apoptosis induction, cycle-regulating genes are mutated or inactivated in diseased cells, and further genes also modify their expression in tumors. Some apoptotic factors are vital during mitochondrial respiration e.g. cytochrome C pathological inactivation of apoptosis in cancer cells is correlated with frequent respiratory metabolic shifts toward glycolysis. Apoptosis in HeLa cells is inhibited by proteins produced by the cell. These inhibitory proteins target retinoblastoma tumor-suppressing proteins. These tumor-suppressing proteins regulate the cell cycle, but are rendered inactive when bound to an inhibitory protein. HPV E6 and E7 are inhibitory proteins expressed by the human papillomavirus, HPV being responsible for the formation of the cervical tumor from which HeLa cells are derived. HPV E6 causes P53, which regulates the cell cycle, to become inactive. HPV E7 binds to retinoblastoma tumor suppressing proteins and limits its ability to control cell division. These two inhibitory proteins are partially responsible for HeLa cells immortality by inhibiting apoptosis to occur. CDV is able to induce apoptosis despite the presence of these inhibitory proteins. This is an important oncolytic property of CDV, this virus is capable of killing canine lymphoma cells. Oncoproteins E6 and E7 still leave P53 inactive, but they are not able to avoid the activation of CASP as is induced from the stress of viral infection. These oncolytic properties provided a promising link between CDV and lymphoma apoptosis, which can lead to development of alternative treatment methods for both canine lymphoma and human non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Defects in the cell cycle are thought to be responsible for the resistance to chemotherapy or radiation by certain tumor cells, so a virus that can induce apoptosis despite defects in the cell cycle is useful for cancer treatment. Treatments 2 
The main method of treatment for death from signaling related diseases involves either increasing or decreasing the susceptibility of apoptosis in diseased cells, depending on whether the disease is caused by either the inhibition of or excess apoptosis. For instance, treatments aim to restore apoptosis to treat diseases with deficient cell death and to increase the apoptotic threshold to treat diseases involved with excessive cell death. To stimulate apoptosis, one can increase the number of death receptor ligands, antagonize the anti-apoptotic BCL2 pathway, or introduce SMAC mimetics to inhibit the inhibitor. The addition of agents such as Herceptin, Irza, or Gleevec works to stop cells from cycling and causes apoptosis activation by blocking growth and survival signaling further upstream. Finally, adding P53 MDM2 complexes displaces P53 and activates the P53 pathway, leading to cell cycle arrest and apoptosis. Many different methods can be used either to stimulate or to inhibit apoptosis in various places along the death signaling pathway. Apoptosis is a multi-step, multi-pathway cell death program that is inherent in every cell of the body. In cancer, the apoptosis cell division ratio is altered. Cancer treatment by chemotherapy and irradiation kills target cells primarily by inducing apoptosis. On the other hand, loss of control of cell death can lead to neurodegenerative diseases, hematologic diseases, and tissue damage. It is to note that neurons that rely on mitochondrial respiration undergo apoptosis in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Moreover, there is an inverse epidemiological comorbidity between neurodegenerative diseases and cancer. The progression of HIV is directly linked to excess, unregulated apoptosis. In a healthy individual, the number of CD4 plus lymphocytes is in balance with the cells generated by the bone marrow, however, in HIV positive patients, this balance is lost due to an inability of the bone marrow to regenerate CD4 plus cells. In the case of HIV, CD4 plus lymphocytes die at an accelerated rate through uncontrolled apoptosis, when stimulated. At the molecular level, hyperactive apoptosis can be caused by defects in signaling pathways that regulate the BCL2 family proteins. Increased expression of apoptotic proteins such as BIM, or their decreased proteolysis, leads to cell death, and can cause a number of pathologies, depending on the cells where excessive activity of BIM occurs. Cancer cells can escape apoptosis through mechanisms that suppress BIM expression or by increased proteolysis of BIM. Treatments aiming to inhibit works to block specific CASPases. Finally, the anite protein kinase promotes cell survival through two pathways. Anite phosphorylates and inhibits BAS, causing BAS to interact with the 14-3-3 scaffold, resulting in BCL dissociation and thus cell survival. Anite also activates IKK which leads to NF, B activation and cell survival. Active NF, B induces the expression of anti-apoptotic genes such as BCL2, resulting in inhibition of apoptosis. NF, B has been found to play both an anti-apoptotic role and a propoptotic role depending on the stimuli utilized and the cell type. The progression of the human immunodeficiency virus infection into AIDS is due primarily to the depletion of CD4 plus T helper lymphocytes in a manner that is too rapid for the body's bone marrow to replenish the cells, leading to a compromised immune system. One of the mechanisms by which T helper cells are depleted is apoptosis, which results from a series of biochemical pathways. Cells may also die as direct consequences of viral infections. 
HIV-1 expression induces tubular cell G2-M arrest and apoptosis. The progression from HIV to AIDS is not immediate or even necessarily rapid. HIV's cytotoxic activity toward CD4 plus lymphocytes is classified as AIDS once a given patient's CD4 plus cell count falls below 200. Researchers from Kumamoto University in Japan have developed a new method to eradicate HIV in viral reservoir cells, named lock-in and apoptosis. Using the synthesized compound heptanoyl phosphatidyl l inositol pentacosphophate to bind strongly to the HIV protein PR55GAG, they were able to suppress viral budding. By suppressing viral budding, the researchers were able to trap the HIV virus in the cell and allow for the cell to undergo apoptosis. Associate Professor Makako Fujita has stated that the approach is not yet available to HIV patients because the research team has to conduct further research on combining the drug therapy that currently exists with this lock-in and apoptosis approach to lead to complete recovery from HIV. Viral induction of apoptosis occurs when one or several cells of a living organism are infected with a virus, leading to cell death. Cell death in organisms is necessary for the normal development of cells and the cell cycle maturation. It is also important in maintaining the regular functions and activities of cells. Viruses can trigger apoptosis of infected cells via a range of mechanisms including Canine distemper virus is known to cause apoptosis in central nervous system and lymphoid tissue of infected dogs in vivo and in vitro. Apoptosis caused by CDV is typically induced via the extrinsic pathway, which activates CASPases that disrupt cellular function and eventually leads to the cell's death. In normal cells, CDV activates caspase 8 first, which works as the initiator protein followed by the executioner protein caspase 3. However, apoptosis induced by CDV in HeLa cells does not involve the initiator protein caspase 8. HeLa cell apoptosis caused by CDV follows a different mechanism than that in Vero cell lines. This change in the caspase cascade suggests CDV induces apoptosis via the intrinsic pathway, excluding the need for the initiator caspase 8. The executioner protein is instead activated by the internal stimuli caused by viral infection not a caspase cascade. HIV Progression Viral Infection the Oropouchi virus is found in the family Bunyaviridae. The study of apoptosis brought on by Bunyaviridae was initiated in 1996, when it was observed that apoptosis was induced by the La Crosse virus into the kidney cells of baby hamsters and into the brains of baby mice. OROV is a disease that is transmitted between humans by the biting midge. It is referred to as a zoonotic arbovirus and causes febrile illness, characterized by the onset of a sudden fever known as Oropouchi fever. Plants The Oropouchi virus also causes disruption in cultured cells cells that are cultivated in distinct and specific conditions. An example of this can be seen in HeLa cells whereby the cells begin to degenerate shortly after they are infected. Caspase-independent apoptosis Apoptosis protein subcellular location prediction Footnotes Bibliography With the use of gel electrophoresis, it can be observed that OROV causes DNA fragmentation in HeLa cells. It can be interpreted by counting, measuring, and analyzing the cells of the sub-G1 cell population. When HeLa cells are infected with OROV, the cytochrome C is released from the membrane of the mitochondria, into the cytosol of the cells. 
This type of interaction shows that apoptosis is activated via an intrinsic pathway. In order for apoptosis to occur within OROV, viral uncoating, viral internalization, along with the replication of cells is necessary. Apoptosis in some viruses is activated by extracellular stimuli. However, studies have demonstrated that the OROV infection causes apoptosis to be activated through intracellular stimuli and involves the mitochondria. Many viruses encode proteins that can inhibit apoptosis. Several viruses encode viral homologs of BCL2. These homologs can inhibit propoptotic proteins such as Bax and Bach, which are essential for the activation of apoptosis. Examples of viral BCL2 proteins include the Epstein-Barr virus BHRF1 protein and the adenovirus E1B19K protein. Some viruses express caspase inhibitors that inhibit caspase activity and an example is the CRMA protein of cowpox viruses. Whilst a number of viruses can block the effects of TNF and FOS. For example, the MT2 protein of myxoma viruses can bind TNF preventing it from binding the TNF receptor and inducing a response. Furthermore, many viruses express P53 inhibitors that can bind P53 and inhibit its transcriptional transactivation activity. As a consequence, P53 cannot induce apoptosis since it cannot induce the expression of propoptotic proteins. The adenovirus E1B55K protein and the hepatitis B virus HBX protein are examples of viral proteins that can perform such a function. Viruses can remain intact from apoptosis in particular in the latter stages of infection. They can be exported in the apoptotic bodies that pinch off from the surface of the dying cell, and the fact that they are engulfed by phagocytes prevents the initiation of a host response. This favors the spread of the virus. Programmed cell death in plants has a number of molecular similarities to that of animal apoptosis, but it also has differences notable ones being the presence of a cell wall and the lack of an immune system that removes the pieces of the dead cell. Instead of an immune response, the dying cell synthesizes substances to break itself down and places them in a vacuole that ruptures as the cell dies. Whether this whole process resembles animal apoptosis closely enough to warrant using the name apoptosis is unclear. The characterization of the CASP as is allowed the development of caspase inhibitors, which can be used to determine whether a cellular process involves active CASP as is. Using these inhibitors it was discovered that cells can die while displaying a morphology similar to apoptosis without caspase activation. Later studies linked this phenomenon to the release of AFE from the mitochondria and its translocation into the nucleus mediated by its NLS. Inside the mitochondria, AFE is anchored to the inner membrane. In order to be released, the protein is cleaved by a calcium-dependent calpane protease. In 2003, a method was developed for predicting subcellular location of apoptosis proteins. Subsequent to this, various modes of choose pseudo-amino acid composition were developed for improving the quality of predicting subcellular localization of apoptosis proteins based on their sequence information alone.